Hey everyone, this is Ryan with The Smart House. And today I have a really quick tip on how to set up a Python environment in the cloud. It's quick and the best part is it's free. Now this video came about because I had quite a few commenters on some of my videos having trouble getting Python environments either set up on an existing machine or attempting to use the uh, Home Assistant terminal to run the Python commands from. Instead of requiring everybody to go out and buy another machine or Raspberry Pi, I thought I'd find a better way. But let me give you one big caveat to this entire thing. This is a dedicated Python environment that is hosted on somebody else's system. So it's limited what you can do on it. And also it will not be able to communicate with your internal network or devices unless you expose those devices to the internet through something like port forwarding. Now, this setup is specifically geared towards something like the Home Assistant Smart Things repair tool that can operate on an outside machine and it just needs to communicate with, say, the Home Assistant servers, or in this case, the Smart Things servers. In a previous video, I showed you how to repair and remove a existing Home Assistant and Smart Things integration that, that breaks. This part of the video will be a follow on to that and show you how to do it in this environment and taking you through in the, the new um, Smart Things setup. So if you missed that video, there's a link above in the YouTube card or there's a link in the description below. You might notice some other limitations uh, if you're trying to do a more advanced project, but for what I'm gonna show you today, this setup will work great. Now there are a few free services out there that allow you to set up a virtual Python environment. One of those I originally looked at was called Python Anywhere. Uh, it's a great tool for prototyping a Python setup someplace, but it had some key limitations that didn't work for this setup. So luckily I was able to find another service that provided something similar and it was even easier to set up. The service is called Replit. It's R-E-P-L-I-T.com or R-E-P-L.I-T. The best part about it is it has a great free tier that does exactly what we need to do and you can upgrade later on if you feel like you need more features. So if you sign up for the free account, it will allow you to open up a quick bash environment and get to a shell which already has Python and PIP pre-installed. So it's very, very quick and easy to get set up. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to sign up for the service, get to a bash shell, check your Python versions, and then I will set up and run the Home Assistant Smart Things removal tool as an example of what you can do in this Python environment. So let's get started. All right, so the first step that we're gonna, uh, we're gonna take on here is we're gonna go ahead and sign up for replit.com or rep.it. Um, this is a collaborative coding application that's hosted entirely online and that allows you to work together on different coding languages, on different projects, and then bring them all together and live test them in the cloud. So we're gonna be using this application to, ho to host our Python code, our, our Python code, and run it from the cloud so we don't have to install it locally. So let's go ahead and jump in and sign up for a new account. So, so when you log in for the first time, it's gonna ask you a few questions about what you wanna do with this particular application. Uh, you'll need to select three languages. It doesn't really matter which three you select. And then you can start coding. So we'll go ahead and actually click the plus button here. And we're going to select bash because we want to create a bash session so we can go ahead and run the PIP script that we need. So once we get in here, uh, it's going to give it a random name so you can collaborate with other users on it. And then we'll cl uh, click create REPL and that will create this new bash session for us to utilize. Click on shell, and we can run a couple of test commands to make sure everything's working fine. So we can do Python version. That tells us we're on version 3.88 of Python. We can also do PIP dash dash version, and that lets us know what version of PIP is available. So um, doing both those things, we know that we have both a solid Python 3 environment and PIP installed as well. So now the next step, would be to install our uh, Hass Smart Things Remove tool. And we do that by going to the link below. And that'll take you to pippypy.org. And that'll give you the option to go ahead and um, copy the commands right out of there so you don't have to watch what's on the video here. So let's go ahead and copy uh, the command pip install Hass Smart Things Remove. 
and we'll paste that into the window here. And that will go through and install all the requirements if there are necessary. I've already done this one time before, so that's why it was so fast. It'll take a few more minutes for you. And then we'll grab this has smart things remove command, paste that into the window. And then after that, you'll need to enter your token, which I showed you in the previous video, um, how to retrieve the token for smart things. So I won't go over that again. So again, just insert the section um, when I switch back to talking about uh, Python and how to set up the Python environment. You can grab the token you set up before for smart things, which you're gonna need to reset up later on. Uh, take that token and you'll wanna paste that in this window here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my token out of Notion and paste that here, which of course I'll blur it out, and then hit enter. And that's gonna go ahead and run the smart things remove tool. And here in a few minutes, we should uh, it should tell me which uh, device it removed should tell me which um, application it removed from the smart things setup. All right, so there you go. Now you see you see that the system has removed the Home Assistant application from my smart things environment. So now all I have to do is go back in Home Assistant, remove it from there, and then we can go ahead and set it back up again. So I'll switch over here real fast to my Home Assistant instance and find the smart things uh, add-on. We'll go ahead and delete it and now it's been removed from my environment. So to set it back up again, all I have to do is click Add Integration, go to Smart Things, go to Submit, and then paste that same token I had before in here. And it's going to communicate with the Smart Things servers. Click Location, Home, and then we'll go to Submit. Now, if you do have um, a modern Galaxy phone and this is set up with your smart things account. It will now ask you for two-factor authentication sending a notification to your Samsung phone uh, So if you do use a Samsung account and have it tied to there You'll probably expect that as part of the login process now So we'll go ahead and give it a name home assistant and this is a little bit different than before because before I think I had it using the old IDE version with a new IDE version uh, It looks a little bit different. So this is probably a good update for that So we'll go ahead and click home assistant done and I want it to be able to see all my devices. Hit allow, and that's it. So now I hit close window, and you'll see all my devices have shown up in Home Assistant. And I hit finish, and there they are. They're all showing up in here right now. There you go. Now you know how to set up a Python environment in the cloud. Use that Python environment to run the Home Assistant Smart Things removal tool. Get the integration removed from Home Assistant, and re-add re it back up again in the new, the new version of Smart Things. All right, there you go. Hopefully that quick explanation helps you get set up with a Python instance in the cloud. With this, you can write a small bot or automation that can run outside of your Home Assistant instance to check to make sure Home Assistant is running or an API point is working and then notify you if it goes down. If that's something you'd be interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below and I can make a quick video on how to do something like that. I'm actually gonna explore utilizing this service for my Notion unofficial API. So if you're a productivity person and you like the application Notion, uh, stay tuned for later videos on how to set up the unofficial API and run it to do a lot of automated things and tie systems together with Notion. Uh, that is unless Notion decides to release their API in the next few months. As always, if you found this video helpful, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, give the video a thumbs up and ring the notification bell for uh, to get notified when I release new videos since I kind of release them on a random schedule. Um, this was a quick video that I saw a question come up in comments. So if you would like to see more videos like this, uh, feel free to post something in, in this video's comments or another video that I've recently posted. And I'll try to add more a quick explainer videos as we go along. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.